Our beaches need more sand. Yes, really. As the global climate crisis rages on, rising sea levels and more natural disasters are covering up and washing away our sandy beaches. If we don't do anything about it, we're on a course to lose almost half of them in this century. So as the apex, big-brained, planet-running head honchos, humans have used our massive intellect to come up with a genius solution. Add sand to the beach. Now, you might be thinking, doesn't sand come from the beach? Well, yeah, but it also is in nearby rivers and the bottom of the ocean. So we've been moving the sand from those places to the beach fronts that are running low. And while it helps keep the beaches where we want them to be, it comes with its own set of consequences. So let's talk about the pros and cons of bringing sand back to the beach. So as you may have heard, sea levels are rising, thanks to climate change. Higher sea levels aren't just covering up the beach, they're also carrying away sand with every wave. Researchers think that by the year 2100, erosion could threaten the very existence of a lot of the sandy beaches on Earth. But we don't have to take this lying down on our beach towels. We can offset that loss by taking sand from places like sand pits or estuaries and putting it on a beach. It's called beach nourishment. And this is nothing new. We've been doing it for more than a hundred years. In 1923, we re-sandified the beach on Coney Island, New York. In 1978, we refilled Miami Beach in Florida. And throughout the years, we've topped off beaches all over Asia, Europe, North America, and Oceania. And it's not just to make sure our favorite tourist spots have enough room for all of our beach chairs. All that added sand can take away some of the energy that an approaching wave brings to shore, kind of like a shock absorber. And since we tend to build a lot of things right along the water, hurricanes and other natural disasters can completely wipe out all our buildings and stuff. But the power of sand is enough to protect us from the most powerful forces on Earth. Like, remember Hurricane Sandy? It completely destroyed the infrastructure where beaches hadn't been resandified in a while. But coastal areas with nourished beaches were way better off and had no homes destroyed during Hurricane Sandy. And no, the irony of that storm's name is not lost on me. So this practice of putting gobs of extra sand on our beaches is life-saving. We can reduce the impact of deadly storms and save sandy beaches from disappearing. It definitely has its benefits, but, uh, they might be short term. Waves and storms will continue to wear the beaches away, so you have to keep adding more whenever the supply gets too low. The good news is that after the first batch of sand, you only need a fraction of that amount when you go to re-nourish the same spot. So if you stay on top of it, keeping the beach where you want it is entirely possible. How large that fraction is though, depends on what sand you used to nourish your beach. Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this SciShow video. Brilliant is an online learning platform with thousands of lessons in computer science, math, and science, like their latest course is all about data. You can gain introductory skills in data analysis or level up your learning with Brilliant. They have options for every level of background knowledge that you might be coming in with. So whether you start with Bayes' theorem or multiple linear regression, there's always more to learn next. In Brilliant's courses, you get to explore data visually, make educated predictions with the power of probability, and create models with multiple variables. And that's just the data courses. Don't get me started on programming, but you can get started programming when you check them out at brilliant.org slash scishow or the link in the description down below. That link also gives you 20% off an annual premium Brilliant subscription, and you'll get your first 30 days for free. Not all sand or even all beach sand is the same. There are white sand beaches and volcanic beaches and everything in between. And color is only one thing that differentiates one kind of sand from another. Sand grains can be different sizes too. The size of each grain has a big influence on its long-term durability on a beach. Smaller, softer, more worn down sand that you dream of when you plan your next beach vacation gets carried away more easily than coarser sand does. So I'm sorry to say that it makes more sense to reload beaches with the rough stuff. But at least your tootsies get some good exfoliation from walking along those beaches. And there's another part of the beach experience that we need to talk about too, which is all the animals that live there. 
There's a lot more to a beach ecosystem than seagulls and seaweed. So you want the sand that you use to be similar to what it's replacing, because all of the critters that live there chose that specific beachfront location for the habitat that they're best suited to. Think of the baby sea turtles that don't want to be eaten before they make their big voyage to the open water, and the clams that need to dig through that sand without arms. Beach nourishment has a huge impact on the organisms that live in the sand, and that's true of the spots where we steal the sand from as well. A ton of particles get kicked up in the process of taking sand from the bottom of the ocean, and all of that debris floating around in the water decreases the amount of light that the plants and corals around there get to soak up. That stresses them out and sometimes even buries them. This has caused problems in the threatened coral reefs near Puerto Rico and critically threatened seagrass in Spain. And even the plants and corals that survived were changed by the whole experience. They couldn't photosynthesize as effectively and their growth was stunted. So this may not come as a surprise, but you can't just take a large chunk of nature and expect everyone living there to go about their business as if nothing happened. What might be a bit more surprising is the fact that the animals living along the shoreline getting nourished also are at risk from the whole process. Let me repeat that. The animals that live in the habitat that we're trying to preserve are being harmed by the preservation of that habitat. One reason is pretty straightforward. Dumping a bunch of sand on top of an already existing ecosystem buries whoever was living there, since we can't exactly let all the clams know to go somewhere else for the afternoon while we renovate their homes. But if we dig deeper, we uncover more problems. Birds and fish that eat plants and animals that live on the shore can't get their food anymore, not just because they're buried, but also because the new sand might be different enough from what was there before that their beaks can't penetrate it. So even if you you survived the big sand dump, your way of life is totally different than it used to be. This was observed in North Carolina, where birds, fish, and clams all struggled to stay alive after their home beach was re-sandified. Surfishes hunt for clams that are a different color from the sand, but after their beach gets refreshed, they may be surrounded by sand that's a different color than it used to be and is sometimes full of empty shell bits. So they may go hunting and keep coming up with empty shells. And things aren't getting better for the clams that don't get eaten. Since the newly nourished sand was softer than what they were used to, they have a harder time digging down into it for their protection. That makes them more prone to getting swept away by waves into the wide open ocean. So pretty much everywhere that we do it, beach nourishment changes the ecosystem. And even when we're trying to save their habitats, we end up killing a lot of plants and animals. We've got a bit of a ecological trolley problem on our hands. It's not a black and white, good or bad situation. We have no way of knowing how many organisms would die from climate crisis-related habitat loss compared to how many die from beach nourishment practices. And habitat loss caused by the climate crisis may not be reversible, while nourished beaches could become more habitable again after about four years. Whether or not we add this sand to our beaches, a significant number of lives will probably be lost. And we caused the climate crisis, so it's kind of our problem to fix. Either way. So, what do you think? Is beach nourishment the way to go? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching.